Hi, I'm Charles Arthur. I'm the technology editor of The Guardian, and we're here to do a review of the iPad mini and a comparison with the Amazon Kindle Fire, which has just been released in the UK. So here on the table in front of me, I've uh, got a iPad. This is the, uh, the standard iPad that Apple has been selling since uh, 2010 as the standard size. So it's got a screen which is 9.7 inches from corner to corner, measured diagonally. That's how screens are measured. And here I have the Amazon Kindle Fire and the new iPad Mini. What you might notice is that although the devices themselves are almost exactly the same size, if I put them edge to edge, uh, you can just about see the iPad Mini, which is here on the top, is very slightly thinner. Um, but in terms of the length and actually the width, they're pretty much exactly the same. The difference comes about in terms of how large their screen is. The Kindle screen is, uh, is actually significantly smaller there. I've turned both of these up to maximum brightness and uh, let's open it and look at the Guardian's technology page for today. And this is how it looks. The Amazon Kindle Fire is on the right, that's my thumb touching it. That's both of them set to the same. So that's maximum brightness for both. Uh, both showing the same page, that's the uh, the website rather than the mobile site. And let's try comparing the loading speed, they're both on the same Wi-Fi network, sign in the same one. I'll uh, press them and let's see how they go. So they're both starting to load it, and the iPad has finished loading it, and so is the Amazon Kindle Fire. Got to say that's a little bit jerky though on the, uh, on the scrolling. The Amazon Kindle Fire uses a version of, uh, of Android. It's uh, the Amazon's own customized version. If we double tap, it resizes the, uh, the text straight away and we can scroll it. And if we do the same on this, if we double tap and scroll through, I'd say that's quite smooth. Just to compare the Kindle apps on the two products, uh, on the right we have the, uh, the, the Amazon Kindle Fire. This is showing the New Oxford Dictionary of English. On the left we have the iPad Mini, which has a book about Samsung that I bought from uh, Amazon. Um, and looking at them again, this is with both screens turned to maximum brightness. The Amazon Kindle Fire, has a, it's got a more of a sort of yellowy cast to it, I think, which um, might be nicer for, for long periods of reading. So um, certainly pretty good on both, actually, there. One thing that you can't see from the camera is the weight. Uh, although the iPad is uh, larger in terms of the screen and very slightly larger in terms of uh, the, the, the sort of the, the body size, Actually, the Kindle Fire is quite noticeably heavy in the hand. It's, uh, there's a difference. The, uh, the iPad Mini, it, it definitely has that, that lightness thing. Of course, there's a price difference that you have to pay for it in terms of uh, the, the iPad Mini, which is uh, around the 260 pound mark, uh, where the Kindle Fire sort of starts around 150 pound mark. That's quite a substantial difference if people are thinking about it. I suspect that the thinness of the iPad Mini, because it uh, it's about half the thickness of uh, the Kindle Fire, and the, uh, the lightness of it will be an advantage for some people. The price is going to put others off, and uh, I think that's always going to be a problem when it comes to Apple's pro products, because Amazon is not trying to make a profit on this. The profit comes from selling the content to people, whereas Apple is looking to make a profit on the hardware and is looking to make a profit on the apps. So it really comes down to, do you like the Apple experience and the Apple apps, or do you prefer to go for the Amazon experience and what Amazon is offering you with, uh, with its content. I think that Apple is going to sell a lot of iPad minis because uh, many people are interested in the iPad, but it's just a bit too much. And when you have uh, the price of the iPad mini compared to the iPad, and when you're talking about hundreds of pounds in difference between the most expensive of the iPads and the cheapest of the iPad minis, I think a lot of people will like this. And we've seen it in the iPod market, where the iPod mini in 2004, people thought it was pretty expensive for what it was, and yet it sold enormously. It was the best-selling iPod that Apple made until the iPod Nano. Smaller tends to beat uh, larger when it comes to devices like this.